video today i've got a special guest to spice it all up mr energy himself damn it matera kovacic is the best midfielder in the world yes he's just a more athletic lukaku i'm trying to get cancelled on my comeback in it you understand it's if N'Golo Kante played for Real Madrid, he'd be widely recognised as the best midfielder of our generation. I bring myself to making a joke about it because he's just wild. Keeping Rudiger for free is better than spending 30 million on Kylian Mbappé. Rizzo Sarri didn't leave Chelsea, we'd be in a better position than that. Nah, man, what are you lot doing? This divides the Chelsea fan base in half. Alright, it's your boy Grand Dama. See you lot later. Nah, man. Right, what's going on guys welcome back to another video today i've got a special guest to spice it all up mr energy himself dammy how you doing bro i listen listen oh it's been too long in it man's not been on the camera since when i can't even remember but listen man is here in it so felix yeah. got my line so we should get some video patterns i said i come in it get me through let's get it sorted oh. let me hear what i want i don't even know what the topics are but you know i'm hearing the right guy to make your return with bro honestly Matera Kovacic is the best midfielder in the world. Mm -hmm. What are you talking about, saying, bro? We're talking, let's say, let's say, box to box, okay? Box to box. Nah, man, what are you lot doing? Do you know what in the world means? Like, it took me, <laughs> you know, I'm going to answer this seriously because for me, a lot of people, I, I, it took me a long time to call Kovacic world class. It took me quite a lot of time. I'm not going to pretend like, I've always said he was world class or red -tete. I do believe he's a very, very good midfielder and he's world class at this point in time. But yeah. best midfielder in the world, big man, we need some goals in your game. Yeah, we yeah. need more assists in your game. We well, need I think he definitely he has improved. He's improved yeah. the output a bit. But uh, okay, I'll, I'll I'll serve that one a bit because I just read one. Kovacic is one of the most talented players in Premier history. In Premier history. I'm not trying to get cancelled on my comeback in it, you understand? It's <laughs> coming smoothly and that. Man, they were trying to cancel me in history. Nah, I, I mean, the thing is, Kovacic is very talented. I've not forgotten when he came on against Arsenal in the 75th minute. Now, him and Hazard were interchanging and all of us thought, Jesus, this guy, we thought it was Hazard because same sort of trim, do you know what I'm saying? Same short sleeve, same color boots. Job, we couldn't really, exactly, we couldn't really tell the difference like that. But what we're yeah, not going yeah. to do is call him one of the most talented players we've seen in Prem history. So, uh, we got another one here. Non-Chelsea related. Well, actually, it is a bit Chelsea related. So, we'll, we'll both talk about this one. Nunez is just a more athletic Lukaku. <laughs> <laughs> You want me to go first with this one, yeah? Yeah, you okay. do, bro. It's just awesome. Look, I'm going first, isn't it? He makes football look hard, and that's something I saw with Lukaku too, right? This guy, you ain't talking about his weight. You're just talking about this guy who just doesn't seem to have this chemistry with the football. Like, it doesn't like him. That goal against Fulham, right, everyone's talking about how techy that goal was. He missed the ball. He missed the ball, and they hit the defender, and it went in. First touch is not good, in my opinion, and that's something Lukaku doesn't have either. So, honestly, this isn't the worst one in the world. I feel like Nunes, I don't really watch him that much. I can't lie, I don't know him like that. Obviously, I can't. If I saw him in the street, I'd be like, yo, do you want one trying to get a meal like Nunes and that? But on a more serious note for me, yeah. I feel like that one is not as mad as it first sounds initially because from the little I've seen, his touch isn't that. He's not a smooth footballer. Do you know what I mean? You know, when you yeah. watch certain individuals on the ball, I, he doesn't fill you up with confidence when he's on the ball. Let's put it like that. You know when you see people like Hazard or Kovacic or let me think of an Berbatov. You know how silky he was on the... You know when you see a man like that on the ball, you're like, hey, yo, he's cut. That's a football. But you see me you know, like... He's one-dimensional. He's running mm. behind. Exactly. I mean, I don't know about that part. Do you know what I mean? Because like I said, I don't watch him that much. I've seen, but I've seen it decent amount of Mm, but yeah, at the end of that, I just feel like this, I wouldn't really. Mm, mm, I, I might let that one slide in. There. Oh, yeah. If N'Golo Kante played for Real Madrid, he'd be widely recognized as the best midfielder of our generation. I don't think that's that bad because I think the second part of what he said, you would find people who genuinely think he's the best midfielder of our generation. And I look, I see it. I see what he's saying. For me, I wouldn't say he'd ever be the best midfielder of our generation. Only because I think I think he's always missed that passing, the edge, the little passing edge. But what he does is very unique. 
in terms of he runs out, he presses the hell out of people, but he doesn't leave space behind him all the time. He can dribble, even though people see him as a defensive player. But the Real Madrid part for me is a thing where I don't think it would have made a difference, especially with the way their midfield is set up. It's a very creative midfield with Cruz and Modric. So I, it's not dumb. This one is, you've got to realise that a playoff Kante is level. Like, once again, when Chelsea even signed him themselves, you... Kante is the calibre of player where you kind of have to adjust the midfield structure to sort of, I wouldn't say compensate because obviously we've seen with Pogba linking up with France, but you've got to factor in the fact that he's a different scale of midfielder. I'm not sure how much I agree with this one because I feel like to be put into that bracket, because for example, look at McLeary. Okay, I know there are two different kinds of players because Makalele was more of a sitter. He was way more technical on the ball. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, Kante yeah, is way yeah. more energetic. His ball winning is a lot quicker. Expansive. Like, exactly. It's he's a lot more expansive and he's a lot quicker as well. Like box to box, he's so much better. But I digress. The thing with Kante is I feel like as much as he's world class and there was a point in his career where you could have regarded him as one of the top five, maybe top 10 midfielders in the world, I feel like he has always lacked some little elements of his game. Here's a good one, right? I'm not going to read it out in the meme way he's done it, right? But Tuchel ain't surviving the season, right? I'm going to go... This one is a good one, right? These, this is the ones that get clipped up. For me, Tuchel is going to survive the season. But I see where he's coming from. The reason why I think Tuchel's going to survive the season is because how much the board and the new owners have backed him and that they're new. I feel like if they've backed him this much, he has assurances that, you know... They know that he doesn't have a director of football, so they're going to be like, Look, as long as we make Europa League and above, we'll keep you in because we trust what you're saying. I don't think they would have backed him this much. I feel like it's one of those ones, because I don't want to digress too much from the initial comment, but players like Aki and Kunde, Kunde was, I feel like Kunde was good, you know what I mean? But once again, I'm, I disagree with this point for a multitude of reasons. The first most important one is the fact that, like you rightfully said, you can clearly see that Tuchel is getting his way at least 90% of the time here. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Kunde was agreed and everything, wasn't it? Like, as, as far as I'm concerned, everything else was agreed. Everything. Was like, too cool was like, no. Yeah, exactly. Tuku was like, let's keep on the back burner. So I feel like, once again, that's one of those things where he didn't want someone. He's not just going to go out there and get him. But then again, you could argue why waste time. But that's a whole different conversation I'm not going to go into. But it's clear the board like and appreciate what he's on about. We'll move on to keeping on managers, right? This is, this is very disdivised the Chelsea fan base in half. If Maurizio Sarri didn't leave Chelsea, we'd be in a better position now. Sarri ball, J5. I'm out of here, man. <laughs> I'm out of here. What? No, no, no. Listen. This is what they call the common sexual nah, versus J5. The question is to answer it. You're going to offend someone. You can't... You can't yeah. then... I, I'm not an extremist on either end. You've got your... I don't like the terms that they use, but, I mean, I'm going to use them for the sake of easy explanation. I don't like the common sexual people that are extreme on one yeah. end, and I don't like the extreme sorry sexuals either. I like to have a conversation in here. I think... No. I literally, like... Okay, clip this up as much as you want. I hated Maurizio Sarri. Mm -hmm. I hated this man. Sorry, this is not like a tactical question. This is not something you can write in the comments and say I'm wrong because this is just my genuine, like genuine, my feeling towards Chelsea during Mauricio Sarri's season. I've never felt more disconnected from a manager. Genuinely, like that's just that's just how I felt and you can't tell me I'm wrong for that. I appreciate his stuff. And the one thing I'd say towards this is, you know, a good argument would be Sarri had a very particular way of playing. And when you have that particular way of playing, you need to buy people who fit that system. So if you gave Sarri more time, this whole Sarri ball thing that everyone was talking about, he could have implemented it more. And you know what? Fair enough. However, myself, I don't see it. I think as much as people hated Lampard, the transfer ban was important for us so that we got uh, some of these youngsters in that were important to us. And I also think that a lot of his stuff, people talk about his achievements, which were fair enough, but he did have Eden Hazard at left wing to give the ball to and do the magic for. So hmm. I can see what you're saying. I can see what you're saying because he had a particular way of playing mm -hmm. that could have been improved. But for me, I didn't see it, man. And I'm, I'm happy we moved on. And I think Tuchel, especially the fact that we've got Tuchel. Now, if you told me this when we had Lampard in, I might say, you know what? Fair enough. Sarri is a better manager than Lampard. But with Tuchel, like, it's not a debate. Tuchel's clear of Sarri. Thinking yeah. about it, I feel like at that very point in time, at that very point in time, it was important 
that he left. And I feel like if things had carried on the way they were going, I'm not sure if it would have worked properly. Now, the hazard thing, I hear what you're saying, but then again, the statistics are also backed. He was in his first proper attacking system while he came to Chelsea, and he produced the best numbers ever. I feel like as much as Hazard is the guy that he is, and you could argue that he carried that Chelsea team, which he did, I feel like Sarri definitely did have a part to play in that, whether you like it or not. You get what I mean? Yeah, fair enough. enough. He got the best out of Hazard, and that's it. Yeah, he got the best out of Hazard. Now, the thing is, I feel like he wouldn't necessarily have progressed nicely because of that transfer window. People forget that Hazard was leaving. That was a major thing. And people also forget that that team was not structured in the best way for Sarri. I feel like you got to also remember that, obviously, the fans didn't particularly like him. I, to this, I like Sarri. A lot of people hate him after I like him. But it's not for the reasons you might think. I watched him. I used to watch a lot of Italian football back in the day when I had a lot more time on my hands. And Napoli yeah. played really, really fancy football. They did die towards the end of the season, usually. That's why they didn't win the Scudetto. That's why they didn't win the Scudetto. Yeah. Was it second season or third season? I can't remember. But I digress. I like the football that was played. But And another thing people need to talk about is people like talking about patience. And Chelsea fans try to pretend they are patient. But Chelsea fans yeah. are not patient. I always claim patience, patience. I have more patience than normal. But I don't have that much patience compared to Arsenal fans. You get what I'm saying? Right. Here's a really interesting one that, is, that could definitely be true. Barkley is better than Mountain and Havertz. <laughs> All right, let's move on. Next one is Pulisic is the is top two attackers at Chelsea. That's not true. You know, what? we'll, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Let me. Okay, if you got, if you got, okay. Go let on. me talk. The thing is, like I said, we've all got potential, and I'm. Yeah, yeah. I always like the whole potential talk when you're talking about a sixteen, no, seventeen, eighteen, eighteen, nineteen. You know what I mean, like that. As much as I find Pulisic frustrating as well, but, but with the injuries and whatnot, these brothers, like Pulisic has shown me at the highest level that he is capable. You get me? He's done it again when he played for Borussia Dortmund against Madrid back in them days. We've seen lockdown Pulisic. Lockdown Pulisic is almost two years old now. You know what I'm saying? He's not two years old now. I swear it's two years old now. Yeah, yeah, two years old. It's like these things are expiring. Like, I keep telling people, yeah. I don't know if you saw my tweet about Kahavet's his Wonder Kid visa. Like, them and there, these yeah. things don't last forever. For me, right now, yeah. they should, as of right now, if they brought in four wingers and they put them on the bench, they are finished. The only thing yeah. keeping them relevant, right? And I'm not even trying to be rude or disrespectful. Because I love, I like, I love Callum Otunodoy. I love Callum Otunodoy. Honestly, I love him. And I love the way he plays his ball. Obviously, I, Pulisic, I like Pulisic, but not as much. But my yeah. Pulisic is all right. I don't even like to rate him like that because I find it quite frustrating. But I digress. My yeah. point is of the matter, the only reason why they're still relevant right now is because of poor recruitment. Because they need to set up their game ups. They've not stepped up yet. Callum, like I keep saying, you can't live off that under 19 hype, that under 18 hype. You get me? The yeah, hyphenated yeah. name hype. We need to keep it stepping. What, you think the mount's not better than Pulisic? We'll have this conversation on a different day. I didn't say that before people clip me up. I didn't say anything. I didn't yeah. comment on this. I didn't comment. Yeah, okay. I didn't say anything. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. But, yeah. Okay, here's a good one. But, and it's on recent form. Unpopular opinion. Kepa is currently better than Mendy. <laughs> 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 to be fair. To be fair, Mendy's, no, no, no. Mendy's form has been shocking recently, right? Like, this guy, he used to be shaky on the ball, but it wouldn't actually affect us. Then he started becoming shaky on the ball where it would affect us, but he could still save everything that came his way. And now the guy can't save either. I mean, that preseason game against Arsenal, I don't know what he was doing with that goal where he parried it to them and then got up like a truck, right? But let's have it right, all right? Let's take some minerals FC here. Let's have it right. Kepa is not better than Mendy. He's literally not even tall enough to ever reach that bracket of goalkeeper, right? At the end of the day, he's simply not tall enough for that. And Mendy is just better. Kepa is decent on the ball, but you can't trust him. And Mendy's better. It's not even a debate. Okay, here's, here's a good one. Here's a good one. It's a, it's a topical one. Kai Havertz has until the end of next season, so this season coming, to prove his worth at Chelsea. That's the latest he can do it. Facts! Yeah, I agree. No, the thing is, like, let me be honest. Like... Let me pull up that tweet. I want to. I want. I don't want to paraphrase myself. I don't know if did you see that tweet I put out on match day. I don't know if you saw it a couple of days. Maybe not, bro. I said anyway. someone needs to tell Havertz that the Wonder Kid visa doesn't last forever. This needs to yeah. be the breakout season. Honest. No, but Jimmy, like, take away, take away that Champions League final goal. Literally nothing. The thing is, like, for me, it's one of them ones where it's like, 
I appreciate his age. I know he's young. What age means? I get it. You know what I'm saying? Like moving to new different places, having to do different things, understandable. You understand? But the issue is, big man, this is your third season. This is your third. Yeah. And my issue is not necessarily the fact that it's the third season. It's the fact that I'm not seeing that progression. I'm not seeing... There's no indicator that tells me this guy is actually beginning to get better or improve. He looked the same against freaking Everton. He not, not, well, let me give you an example. Yeah? Let me give different. you an example. Like, we, I, I think that in our system, at least, like I know where he should play. At least I thought through the middle. But we actually don't know his best position after three years. Like We genuinely don't know that. Like he could, he could say he's a number ten. We thought he could play down the middle. Suddenly, Tuchel's playing Sterling down the middle and him on the right. And the next game, he's playing him on the left. It's like, bro, we need something here. We need some like continuity. We need some progression. But it's not really happening. And but I believe. In I him. keep telling people like once again, I've always felt like Chelsea is not an environment where you grew fresh talent. I'm sorry, it's not really ever. People talk about man, these James. Listen, big man, when they came into Chelsea for start, you will never ever get a situation like that transfer ban. Except we get transfer ban again. You're not getting anything yeah. like that. And it was Lampard yeah, yeah. and Judy Morris. Them man knew these brothers like the back of their hand. You understand? So the circumstances for their proportion into this first team were so unique and they will never be replicated again. Under every other circumstance, who, like, tell me how many times you see a new youngster break in and just absolutely perform. Yeah, you could argue yeah. Taliban last season had quite a decent season. Nah, but, but my point is that it's, yeah. not, it's not a conducive environment for them. And the thing is, Hubbard, as much as he was a talent in Germany, I watched him playing in Germany, and I like to compare him to, like, I called him a mix of Berbatov and Ozil. And I say that not in terms of, like, how the... It's the nonchalance. You get me? The way that effortlessness, that's how you... That's so but now, you don't even really see... He's getting pushed over by next man from Brighton, and then doing... The, you get me? It's, 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 yeah. And like I said, there's no... I can't see progress in his game. He still looks the same. Nothing is changing. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Madness is doing the same thing over and over again and it keeps failing and you don't do anything. You understand? You could yeah. argue that you could to make some tweaks here and there. 100%. Mm -hmm. Argue you need better yeah. supply from the midfield because they make runs and nobody supply. 100%. But I need you to step up your game, bro. If after this season you're not really, you might be off back to Germany like, well, no. I can't lie, you might be. Let yeah. me keep it respectful. And I don't even mean that because I want it to happen, but that's just how things might be. Yeah. You're an 80 million pound yeah. asset. You need to do more. Unpopular opinion. Kalidou Kulabali is an upgrade on Tony Where's Rudiger. Alright, it's me up on the grand dam. I'll see you lot later. Nah, man. Who said that? Okay, it's, it's like, another one. Another it's, it's app. It's worth debate. It's not why. why H H H H underscore comps. There's, there's your third one to to, to be attacked. <laughs> Thing is, right? Look, we all love Kulabali. We all love Kulabali, but. Antonio Rudiger was just different gravy. And this guy, like, also, he was on a free. Like, this guy was, he was at our club. Like, we, we didn't, we didn't improve by spending 30 are million you, on Kulibaly. Are you reversing, wait, are you, what, are you, so you think Rudiger is better than Kulibaly? Yeah. Nah, you can't be serious. Wait, wait, wait you are you arguing the opposite? You can't be serious. Wrong. Yeah, Rudiger's better than Kulibaly. no way. Oh my God. Look, look. No, look are look. you trolling? Well, why are you trolling? No, 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 no. no. I love, you can't be serious. I love Kulibaly, don't get me wrong. But keeping Rudiger for free is better than spending thirty million on Kulabali. Are you Kulibali. serious? Bro, nah, this is new. I'm, this is new. I'm not wrong. Bro. This no, no. Rudiger, Rudiger also fitted our system so well because he was so fast. He'd go into midfield and cover the holes that that we'd leave in midfield. This can't be he, he was progressing the ball, and, and the guy, he was two years younger. Rudiger is better than Kulabali. Yeah, at left centre back. Obviously, not in a four. Obviously, not in a four. But in a five. I think no. Okay, how about it? One trying you to know say what? Keep you know what? What? Tweet that. Just tweet it. Let me. No, 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 no. I'm not. I'm not saying. No, 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 let I will retweet yeah. it for you. You don't need my retweet, <laughs> but let me let's let's get how many people you got like what 20? Yeah, 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 okay. Okay. Yeah. We can bring 65,000 people into the conversation and see what one in it because the mathematics is not mathing in this conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Let, let me say my point. Let me say my point. I'm not saying that Rudiger is purely like if I could pick one of the two, it's better than Kulabali. Okay, I'm saying that keeping Rudiger on a free as he's two years younger is better than paying 30 mil for Kulabali. 
Koulibaly was a great deal, but you're still spending 30 mil. We could have spent that 30 mil extra on buying a creative winger, on uh, putting that towards a DM instead of instead of putting on Koulibaly. Do you not see what I'm saying? If we if we want to transition to a four, then it's out of the question. Koulibaly is obviously better than Rudiger. But for this circumstance we were in, I would have rather we just paid for Rudiger, get that extra contract in. Come on, bro. That's not wrong. That's not wrong. <laughs> what about Flucio? Okay. You're not having what, it, are you? What about Flucio? You get me? Ziyech is better than Salah as a winger. That's good. That's <laughs> wild. Man, that one is <laughs> wild. I can't, even, That's not I can't even bring myself to making a joke about it because it's just wild. Like, Alonso as a false nine, we don't need to compare. But Alonso as a false nine is better than Kai Havertz is the one I have up here. But we're not comparing. Alonso, the one that came in a lot, Alonso as a striker would bang. If on, that's a Marcus one. Alonso had no defensive keep defensive things at that false nine position and he didn't really have to connect play, I agree in it. <laughs> <A post laughs> line, just a listen, up. Alonso, all jokes aside, I have see there are very few footballers that can hit the ball as sweetly as that guy. And position yeah. bro, he takes up very good positions in the box. He's got the I'd say I say when it comes to like volleys, especially like you're not getting better than than. No he's also got the high. He's got the free kick tech. Like I said, the person yeah. that started him and threw my left wing back. Listen, you got blood on your hands. You you have yeah. had a potential fifty million pound agent clause kind thing loading, and you just packed it in. You get me? You know what? It's, 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 yeah. 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 Right. yeah that's a good one to end on. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. A lot of these were a bit, you know. It's a bit far, some of these, but yeah, there was a few that you could have had a bit of debate in, uh, and we, we tried. So, so, I mean, Felix, it's on wild things, but you know, it's fine, isn't it? Well, but look, all I said was facts, that's all. Mm-hmm. So, if you like the video, like it. If you didn't like it, still like it. Uh, make sure to comment, <laughs> share the video, follow the Grandam on Twitter, and your YouTube is also the Grandam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, follow the Grandam on YouTube, class guy, and uh, see you next time. See you.